what's in the air right now, the F-16 Thunderbirds. They are here. Paul Sullivan, you, you piloted these planes. Yes, I flew uh, the F-16 for almost 15 years, actually over 15 years, well, 3,000 hours in them operational. And I know Rob can throw a lot more interest into the Thunderbird side of the house, but I got to fly everything from the second version, the Block 5 F-16, all the way up to the Block 50 F-16, which is the most current version out on the line that the pilots are flying. And the engines get stronger and faster and bigger and produce more power. Um, I was able to get up to Mach, over Mach 2 over the Gulf of Mexico during the test mission, uh, doing a check ride, uh, checking the engine out, and also uh, zooming up at about, like they talked about, 30,000 feet per minute. It's true, because I was up at about 15,000 feet off the ground in about four, less than 30 seconds. And for folks at home that don't know, Mach 2, that's twice the speed of sound. Yes. So you're going close to 1,500 miles an hour? Yeah, it was pretty close to that. And uh, you actually can kind of hear a little bit of wind noise. Normally, the F-16, the way people, the pilots described it when they first started flying, it was like beyond the end of a pencil because the wings are behind you and you can't even see them. You're surrounded by glass. You're in a, a seat that reclines 30 degrees. You have a side stick controller, which is fly-by-wire, and you have an armrest on there and your throttle's on the left. So you're basically sitting in comfort at 30 degrees <laughs> like in a recliner while you're flying along in this supersonic fighter. It's pretty, ex pretty amazing. Well, probably not too comfortable with 9 Gs, though, is it, Paul? No, it hurts. And actually, I had to do a mission with the harm targeting system where we had to do negative 3 Gs oh, that's the where worst. you push over and the blood rushes to your head. It's kind of the opposite of the, um, you know, the G-lock phenomenon. So... We just kind of, uh, that actually hurt more than me than hitting nine Gs. <laughs> we have a Thunderbird on the set over on our Indiana side. That's right, guys. Now, Rob Giffins is here with us. You know a thing or two about pulling the Gs there in the F-16 for many years. I do. I've got uh, almost 2,000 hours in the F-16. Went to the Thunderbirds in 1996 in the fall for training season and got to my third air show ever was here in Louisville, Kentucky. Got to come home and fly the air show with the, with the team, which was great. And what you're seeing today actually is a little bit of Thunderbird history uh, being made here in Louisville, Kentucky, because today we have Thunderbird 7, the operations officer, and Thunderbird 8, the advanced pilot, both flying in an air demonstration in front of such a huge crowd, and that is a Thunderbird first for these two to do that. F on cue, demonstrating precision right as I finished that historic <laughs> sound bite. Here they came. Love it. We could see some things flying around our set here, so definitely powerful there. Right, and so they're demonstrating. They like to demonstrate what we call tactical surprise, where they sneak up on the crowd and give them a good, good bit of sound. And so what we're seeing today is two of the Thunderbirds coming in, demonstrating some of the basic maneuvers that the team will do. The Thunderbird training program is very extensive, and the pilots, all pilots, one through eight, do go through a rigorous amount of training, although typically one through six are the actual demonstration guys on any given day. But all the seven and eight do fly. They deploy uh, aircraft to the shows, like we've seen here. They give all, have all the fun giving the meteor rides, which everybody that has an opportunity to take a meteor ride should take it. You're <laughs> hinting to me. I, I, I was really concerned about getting sick. Uh, and, and you got to admit, you know, a lot of people do. It just happens, right? It's not something the average person can do very well. That's, a rite that's of passage. They, they get sick and they get through it. Yes, but anyway. <laughs> so hint, Karen. Uh, what, yeah. we, what we've got these guys coming out to doing today is uh, demonstrating some of the individual maneuvers that the team does and that they practice. And they will come in low over the river. They were able to give a little bit of tactical surprise. And they're going to make some noise because really they are representative, although they're getting a lot of glory, just these two pilots. They're representative of a much bigger team effort of over 315,000 airmen in the U.S. Air Force today. So impressive. And you loved, obviously, your years of being a Thunderbird part of that team. I did, actually. You know, it's one of those things, it was the best job and the worst job. I mean, you live out of a suitcase for uh, over 200 days a year, but the people you meet, the things you get to see, and the opportunities you get are just fantastic. You see every part of the United States, from great places like Louisville, obviously, to Horseheads, New York, very small, uh, you know, air shows. And you're able to come out and really demonstrate what uh, the Air Force can do. You know, we can't take everybody to the bombing range and show you how precise we can be with a bomb. So what we do is we'll fly three feet apart from each other at over 450 miles an hour to make sure that uh, you trust us when we tell you, hey, guess what? We can yeah. do anything we need to. Now, and, and did, at any point, obviously, you are the professional. We're going to listen to it for a minute.
we're talking about millions of dollars worth of uh, aircraft there flying so close together. Were there ever times you were a little nervous or you were way past <laughs> that? Oh, no, never nervous. Never. Uh, yeah, absolutely <laughs> nervous. But you're so, especially when you first start. But the team is very smart, mm -hmm. right? Safety of the crowd, mm -hmm. first objective, safety of the pilots, and safety of the aircraft themselves. So they start really far apart early in November, and then they work their way to March. And uh, as a bit of trivia, if you see the Thunderbirds fly in the first show in March, and the last show, normally on the road at the end of October, first part of November, their distances have changed oh. because they get even closer the more they practice. And Rob, nope. this is considered a workhorse for uh, the military. What kind of missions? these fly. Right. Well, Paul was talking a little bit about it. He's got some great F-16 experience. Uh, the F-16 flies the whole myriad of Air Force uh, air-to-ground missions and air-to-air -air missions. So it is a fighter. It is flown by multiple countries that are allied with us. It has been the backbone of the U.S. Air Force uh, fighter uh, force for at least the past 20 years. It drops bombs. It shoots missiles against enemy airplanes. It shoots missiles that Paul was talking about against uh, enemy radars. And uh, it's been in every one of our uh, conflict since 1991 and still working very hard today and it'll be around for a little while longer but it too like the rest of our fighter aircraft are, will be phased out and replaced by both the F-22 and F-35. And this is Matt, uh, I think we've talked about it before, one of your favorites too, right? I mean I love the F-16, I love all the fighter jets guys, I mean you know yeah. uh, Rob you could tell it's, I, I hear the term used a lot, it's military power. You know, I, commercial jets can be loud, but I mean, these guys can break your eardrums <laughs> if they get, you know, <laughs> low and fast enough. Uh, I'll, you know, love things like when they come down here uh, low right along the Ohio River. And you hear this. It's, uh, I mean, it's it, meteorology and aviation go hand in hand. Rob, you know, you I don't want to fly into a thunderstorm. That, nope, that makes it right. a little too bumpy. That's <laughs> right. You know, the, uh, the first person actually we talk to prior to every mission is the weatherman, and then we talk to the intelligence officer. But, uh, yeah, that's a, a huge thing, aviation and weather. Uh, as advanced as we are uh, as an Air Force and as an air nation, you still have to pay attention to Mother Nature. And you can see what uh, these guys are out today, though. It's great. Like we said, the weather's fantastic. And they're out flying, doing some good maneuvers. And uh, some of the stuff we saw earlier, they're doing a bottom-up pass. The guy underneath the, the other pilot is only looking at that aircraft. He is not looking anywhere else. I think uh, um, they were talking about it a little bit earlier. Is, you know, you got to trust your flight lead. You can only look uh, at the other airplane, and it's, it's kind of a big, big deal. Well, we want to know, uh, we've been asking, of course, our viewers, Rob, to send in their questions about the plane specifically uh, through Twitter here asking, can the Thunderbird shatter windows? <laughs> yes, so the F-16 Fighting Falcon that the Thunderbirds are flying, also known as the Viper, uh, is capable of going faster than the speed of sound, and you can shatter windows, which <laughs> is why at an air show in the United States, these aircraft are not allowed to break the sound barrier. They can get close. You know, but uh, they won't go over one times the speed of sound because you wouldn't want a, a big boom and you wouldn't want to shatter windows. So um, for our viewer who's maybe, you know, thinking of an insurance claim, it's probably <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah, baseball sorry. with the neighbor. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Wait, and besides, when it comes down to any type of air incident around here, we're going to blame Jay Gordon anyway. So, uh, <laughs> and it's qu quite tempting, though, for these, uh, these pilots to want to cross that line. It's probably hard to kind of rein yourself back when you're in the seat. Well, that is true. Speaking about being back in the seats, uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so they, cool. that is true, but these guys are so well trained and they practice so much. They know that aircraft. It is, uh, you know, they are able to uh, to keep track of their altitude, airspeed, and it's just a great uh, uh, demonstration for them to show you they can take that airplane right to a limit mm -hmm. and not cross it. Now, Rob, we're looking at number seven and number eight here, but there was a FAA restriction put in place. I believe it was for the large yellow crane building the uh, I-65 bridge. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I mean, obviously, these guys are putting on a spectacular show. What are some of the formations? What are we missing out on not having one through six here today? So normally when you have one through six, you'll see uh, uh, two uh, types of show, essentially. So we've talked... Um, Paul was talking about high show, low show, and flat show. Thunderbirds do that. But you'll see the four ship, which is known as the uh, uh, diamond, 
And then you'll see the two solos, five and six. The four ship will come through and they'll do rolls in formation, they'll do loops in formation. And then one of the hardest things they'll do is formation changes. So if you start off in a trail formation with the airplane stacked underneath each other, then you start a roll, you have to move back into that four ship formation. And uh, that is like sapping every bit of pilot talent you have to get into the proper formation and do that. And then in between those maneuvers, the solos will come in, and they're demonstrating more the capabilities of the aircraft. Where the F-16 pulling nine Gs at one time, and how quickly and tightly you can do 360 degrees, which is critical for combat capability. They'll do that for a while, then the show, those six airplanes come back together, and you'll fly in the Delta, and the Delta will do big, graceful, sweeping maneuvers, because with that many airplanes together, you gotta have a lot of space to do it. And then, like to do the favorite Thunderbird trademark, which is the bomb burst, where they all split apart and then come back together. And there was a question earlier about, are they talking to each other? Very, very s small communication, precise language at the right time to make sure that everybody knows they see each other, and then the rest is really just all done through memory and practice. Wow, so impressive. Such a sleek uh, plane there to see, Rob, and obviously the guys uh, behind in their cockpit there, top-notch pilots, and uh, we thank you for your service of yours here, too, and being part of the show for Thunder Over Louisville.